Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of January 2014 and it is called Planning for Success. Now this uh, lecture uh, kind of came from an ask video mail question that kind of sparked my interest in that the person that asked it kind of well, had this idea about what you should do to plan for a shot that is kind of a little bit out of control. And when I read it a few times, I kind of realized that what the person was describing as kind of a pretty like off the wall uh, scenario is not really all that off the wall at all. <clears throat> and you're more than likely going to encounter something very similar to it. And if you don't have a planning workflow, then you probably are going to get caught off guard at some point, and that's never a good thing to do. So workflow starts with planning, and I don't think to this date I have emphasized planning as part of an essential part of workflow enough. You see me when I'm working sometimes just jump right into the animation and normally that's due to the fact that I have like something to show you that's in the middle of workflow or it's a workflow choice that comes later and all the planning would be done by that point. Whatever the case is, I still I, I still felt it was necessary to do to just show you a good planning workflow and this is it's not like any other planning workflow you've seen I can promise you that much it it has a lot of the same elements in it but remember what I like to try to do is to give you a way to think about the animation and the work ahead of you in a way that will make it so that you're never like scared or caught off guard or there's never like a question mark above your head. And that's normally how it is for beginner animators. Every single shot it, that you get, it's kind of like, well, how am I gonna do this one? Well, you're going to do it, you're gonna actually accomplish it the same way you accomplish the last one, or hopefully your last best work. That's what workflow is, right? Now what you're animating is gonna change. So if you, for instance, had a shot with a character jumping over a, a horse, and then the next shot you have a, a, a tube of toothpaste um, splatting on the concrete well you're not actually going to use some of the same you use some of them but not all of the same techniques to do it so there is a difference between technique and workflow and I think that that gets muddled a little bit in planning because people think that their planning workflow is a lot more technique than than actually workflow and so then they don't do some of it when a shot comes along and they think they can just wing it. I'm gonna read a little bit of this question. What's your process for animating something you can't possibly shoot reference for? Let's say an angry mechanical hippopotamus riding a BMX doing a backflip and landing on ice in outer space. Do you just thumbnail that and forget the reference vids? It's a hilarious idea for a shot. Okay, so I thought I would actually plan this shot. Okay, and go through kind of all the things that I go through, starting, oh, excuse me, up all night with the baby. Uh, starting with the macro, the 10,000 foot view um, assessment of, of the shot and then going into the micro, planning the micro, okay? 
And what I'm hoping is that the process itself, the workflow, is something that you will take on or at least make a bigger part of how you plan and not think so much that what you're doing is just technique so that so that in some cases you don't have to look for reference or whatever because that's really the kind of the a little bit of the impression that I got from this question which is what happens when you can't shoot reference well that's a kind of a weird question because I I actually can't think of anything at all that you, that you wouldn't have a better time animating after turning on the camera getting a little footage for yourself okay I, I, I literally cannot um, so let's um let's kind of jump in here excuse me and um, and see what is going down okay um, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to start off with is, is just, where is it? Where's the notepad? Okay. So I have this uh, notepad here. Um, first thing, scene breakdown. Where is the dynamic? That's the first thing we're going to talk about. What, what that asks is, what is the actual dynamic? What In dynamic, let's break that down. Dynamic is the movement or the change that actually drives the scene. Okay, where is the dynamic? What is this shot about? So I just kind of invented what this shot is about, and this this um, mechanical hippo on a bike doing a backflip and landing on ice in outer space is actually escaping some aliens. Okay, and this is like the final move that he does to to get out of like the alien base or whatever. Okay, but wh where is the dynamic? Actually asks. Like what is accomplished by the by the motion, or at least that's that's what it asks for me. What is accomplished by this? Okay, and what the overall scene dynamic I want to have is a real like bursting out of this um, uh, this alien base. Okay, on this BMX bike, but really the dynamic is escape. The dynamic is sort of like almost like an ejection from this from this base and and doing that thing and landing on I don't know a lake of ice on the moon who the hell knows okay so the first thing to ask yourself is um, and this is a very interesting thing I think uh, we did a table read because we're doing a feature film here at Arconics. We did a table read, and a lot of the notes, uh, the, the writer uh, was, was there. I'm directing it. The writer was there. Uh, and he asked some questions of the people who were, uh, who were doing the performance of the table read. And a lot of their answers could have um, been separated. <gasps> God, I'm so sorry. It just serves me right for being up so late, though. A lot of the questions could have been separated into understanding what, like what the what goes on in the movie, and what the movie is about. Okay, so that's kind of the task of you as an animator. The scene dynamic is not necessarily what goes on; it's more what the scene is about and how the motion kind of accomplishes that. Okay, so. This dynamic we want is escape, right? Almost being like birthed into the, into like space, okay? Shooting out, okay? Next thing we want to look at is um, what are the forces? What are the, let me make this font a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, just, um, what are the forces? And what that means is, this is a lot more like what happens? to get that scene dynamic. What are the forces? Well, we have a major force, which is that hippopotamus um, bursting out of this, um, bursting out of like, the, like this glass base, right? Um, that's a major force. And then 
is there another force that's like acting on the hippopotamus? If there's not, that's fine. There can be just one major driving force for the scene. Okay, we're going to get into all the forces that are at play um, in the in the rest of the shot in a second, but um, but once you know that and you separate these things, and this may seem like I'm getting super technical, like why am I doing this? Well, I've only been talking for five minutes about this, and five minutes of of thinking about a shot. Um, you, I mean, you can do that like normally, like from your your car, like walking to your desk if you stop at the water cooler every single morning. You know what I mean? It's, n it's not a waste of time to get this granular. All right? And then, next up, is simplifying forces. What simplifying forces means is we're going to kind of start to ignore forces that don't contribute to the dynamic of the scene and and only focus down on those forces that are going to be a part of, of, of the story we're trying to tell or the, the, the action that really like drives the scene. Okay, So I'm going to start trying to simplify this force okay, on screen because this is a super um, physical shot. All right. I should note that this works for non-super physical shots, but the scene breakdown is a, is a little bit different. Okay, but I did want to take on this shot because this this uh, animator seemed to think that uh, you're kind of like left out in the cold when there's not something that's easily um, uh, video referenced. So um, here is here is mischief. I love mischief. It's so cool. It's like a vector and also like raster uh, drawing program. It's really weird. It's really weird and awesome. Um, how do I go back? There we go. So, cool. So I'm going to just start, um, it, it's easier to do this kind of visually. I'm gonna just start like drawing, like kind of like what that force is, okay? And and for me, it's almost like there's like this explosion, right? But like the explosion kind of like shoots out like th this, this, this hippopotamus that's, that's on this bike, right? And, and there's this, this gigantic force that's just being like hurtled forward, right? Uh, on, on this, uh, uh, what do you call it? This motorcycle. Or what was it? Is a BMX, right? So I'm not going to I'm not going to spend too much time like rendering this out. I'm just going to kind of like like what really is is going on here? And I I like the idea that there's like this bursting out that um, that sort of radiates as well. Okay. And wh why am I getting so technical? Let me draw the rest of the base. Right. So we got this little alien like uh, base, and it's got like this like glass pod right and uh, I don't know it's connected to a building back here or whatever and uh, and then here's the moon <clears throat> like craters and stuff right and so this guy just like flies out all right so I like the idea that the 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 simple the the main force of this shot is really this 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 super high dynamic action of him flying out and and glass and and whatever scattering and like really kind of like exploding in all directions <clears throat> like that flesh out this base a little bit. All right. So that goes back here and you get like the rest of, you know, the curvature of the moon or something. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> Uh, 
Moon, moon, isn't, moon isn't that curved. <laughs> okay. So this is, am I going to use this? No, probably not. But is this a waste? No, not at all. I, I, that took me another like three minutes to draw that, right? That's not fantastic, but this is kind of like me showing like what's the story of this? Is this a storyboard? No. Um, the storyboard will have my, my staging decisions. Okay, storyboard, um, we'll get to this in a second, but the difference between a storyboard and a thumbnail Thumbnails for you as an animator to figure out pose and weight and sort of like, you know, the the dynamic within the character. And the storyboard is for the scene dynamic. It's the action of the character matched with staging to uh, and camera to give you the, the, you know, what you're going to see in the shot. Okay. But I just like to kind of like start off with just a very basic idea of the dynamic of the scene, okay? So that's really what is super important to get going in this scene. Now, did I draw this explosion happening? Boom. And then draw the hippopotamus doing this landing, you know, this crazy landing on the moon, right? Um, I think it was doing a backflip, right? Right, and landing on the moon, and then there's the, you know, the, the lake of ice. And this big impact right here. No, those are all things that are going to happen, but it's not the dynamic of the scene. It's not the main thing that's going to get the, 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 the energy across. What are some other examples? Um, I liked how in, I gave this example I think the other day in a video mail. I like how um, Sean Kelly um, animated in, in Transformers. Um, he, he, he's a guy that really understands dynamic. He really seems to be able to create a very clear dynamic in every single shot that he does. Um, and how do you know how do you know when that happens? Well, I took I took his work in, in Transformers, for example, because it's so easy when you have like a fight scene between robots, and in, the, in that movie, they get very, very confused. I, I sometimes don't know like who I'm rooting for. Like they'll like tangle up and like take a step back and then go back again. And in that, that one second where they like separate and then go back again, I can't pick out who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. And so I don't know who's supposed to be winning right now. But it seems like in his work, um, and uh, he's, over the years he's showed off some of his shots on, on, on that film, or those films, he's worked on a few. Um, seems like he's able to, in his scenes, always get like the main action, uh, or the main, sorry, dynamic across. So if, if, if the one character is supposed to basically, you know, um, seem like they're overpowering the other that's the scene dynamic whereas in the scene what might happen is a punch is blocked he might shoulder bump him and then grab him and then they both go over like a hill or something right so those are like crazy things that are going on but in general the dynamic is is overpowering so with with robots what you might want to do is you might want to draw you know your your two robots and there there's like this 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 really strong force right here where one is holding the other i'm, I'm doing like box characters with their box heads and, and 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 whatnot and this one you know just can't get a grip and he's you know starting to slip slip off this uh uh like ledge right here right and this might be sort of something like the uh, what it looks like when they start falling over the edge, but it might not be as well. All right? Do you see the point here? It might not be. This might not show up in the scene itself, but it is a good thing to start really feeling that there's this moment where like the tides kind of shift. Okay. Now, at this point in planning. Again, I'm, I'm explaining what I'm doing, but I normally would take maybe five minutes to just identify the main dynamic and then just almost just like as if it was a comic book, just like do a little like story image. It's not a storyboard. It's, it's kind of like, well, this is when the tides turn, like in this shot. 
you know, and, and this guy is, you know, he's losing his footing. Um, and uh, maybe this foot's up, already slipped, and this one's up in the air. And this guy, he's like, Optimus Prime. Right? And he's pushing him, pushing him over this ledge. Right? This sh sheer cliff. Whatever it is, right? I might just do that because what 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 will this do for me? I might not use this for posing. I might not use this for for staging. But this kind of has that feeling, that energy of like just like the overpowering starting to happen. And I might even like do a couple action lines on this, like where it, it feels like like just like a nice broad stroke. Okay where it almost feels like the action is like that where like I'm using the thickness of the line and everything to kind of really feel like something is changing in this shot when you're about halfway through blocking no matter what the action is if the overall scene doesn't feel like it's it's starting like with them evenly matched and maybe just like a little bit of of, of just like you see right here in this curve right here um, just a little bit of of maybe momentum shifting but then all of a sudden the guy overpowers him just an energy whatever it is if it's a punch or a block or they grapple or if it's a look um, or if it's the foot position or even the staging, the size of the shapes on screen, if it's a moving camera, like how that dynamic of the moving camera uh, is changed by that camera, right? All that stuff. If it doesn't, if you're seen, if you can't close your eyes and throughout the entire scene feel that dynamic of like, like here comes the overpowering. It doesn't matter what the action is. If you if you if you don't feel that dynamic about halfway through blocking, you need to kind of like revisit what you're doing, okay? And and um, see if you can find the dynamic, find the scene dynamic in a lot of your favorite movies. And what you might find is that, um, especially in some of like you know like these gigantic robot movies like Pacific Rim is a good example. I'm not saying that the animation isn't fantastic, but a lot of shots are missing, for me at least, a overall dynamic. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of like the same uh, level of energy, almost kind of like beaten like a drum repetitively some of it is unbelievable some of it like like a lot of it i couldn't do i'll i'll be the first person to say that like i couldn't animate like you know a lot of the shots in that film all right but at the same time uh we we should try to train our eye to to, to find that a good example when the dynamic is really 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 good is um when the, it, uh, uh, the jaeger is fighting the kaiju and and it, it gets to the point where he grabs the boat okay because that in the it, like the six or seven shots like running up to that moment where he smashes him with the boat it really really felt like in the staging and like the energy and whatever that it was like a build up to this gigantic smash all right, and so the dynamic of of that entire sequence is kind of like this. It's kind of just building up. Actually, let me do this. It's like building up and building up and building up and building up and smashing him like that. That would be like the sort of the action line that I would draw. I might draw like a a, a pose. Uh, I might draw like a drawing like this where a Jaeger like is smashing him, but then I would draw like sort of this action line where it's just like building and building and building and lifting it up and just dropping, you know, dropping on him. And that's like sort of the energy of the scene. I think I've shown you guys these things before, um, hopefully. Um, these are my favorite things to, to refer to when it comes to down to like the energy of scene. This is 
kind of a way, like a, it's almost like calligraphy, but it's a great way to um, sort of analyze the dynamic of a character. Up at the top, this is from Surf's Up. So if you've ever seen that film, if you haven't, you should watch it. It's great. Um, Big Z just has, he's got like one energy. He's got like one wavelength and it's just relaxation, right? Lonnie, also very, very, very relaxed and she's got a little bit of direction and a little bit of interest. Tank is just like a bullet. Chicken Joe has like a huge amount of energy, but he has like no refinement to it. Cody at the beginning of the film has like limitless energy, but no focus. Limitless energy, and you can tell there's so much potential. By the end of the film, when he's sort of assimilated some of Chicken Joe's, um, you know, like randomness, a little bit of Lonnie's sort of... Um, um, calligraphy and then uh, really tapped into his own energy the way Big Z teaches him to Cody at the end of the film has this absolutely just gorgeous um, style and you could say you could argue that what we're looking at is kind of like the foam or you know the trail that the the character leaves behind their surfboard but really I think that this is actually almost like a signature it's like almost like an energy signature of, of each one of these characters, okay? So armed with this, armed with this kind of like line, can you imagine approaching a shot now when I tell you, okay, here's the dynamic of the scene, okay? Co look at this Cody end of film, all right? Right now, the way that you're having him kind of you know, um, um, kind of just like one wavelength is kind of like Big Z. That's what I'm talking about in the in the uh, like the the kaiju fights. Some of the kaiju fights, it kind of just felt like like hit and then hit and then hit and then hit. And there's no no real like progress in terms of like energy, right? <clears throat> But if I tell you, okay, now it's time for you to kick it up a notch. I'm, it looks like Big Z. Like even, even though he's doing like little tricks and whatever, it still feels like it's on like a wavelength. Um, I really want you to turn it up a notch and do this like this bottom one, Cody at the end of the film. That's what I want to see, right? Um, could you do that? I, I, think, I think most of you could um, armed with that. So... Is it necessary to be able to do like gorgeous calligraphy like that? No. I mean, look at this this, this silly line that I that I made here, right? Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is this that's what I'm talking about in, ter in terms of sort of like accessing and simplifying the dynamic of the scene. How is the energy kind of uh, being being uh, exhausted um, as the as the as the scene goes on? Now we do a character breakdown. Okay, what's the dynamic within the character? Now, I started doing just like a little thumb of a hippo on a BMX bike. And it doesn't matter really what the character is. Um, you really need to start thinking about like what, is, what are going to be some of the dynamics that you want the character to actually have within the, within the character. Not just the scene, because the character is almost like, in this scene, the character is almost like a projectile that's coming out of the space this you know space uh, uh, station, right? What about within the character? Uh, there was this shot on Kong that I had where Kong grabs onto, um, basically he's on a ledge, woo. Basically he's on a ledge and um, he's sitting here and he has to leap out. So he's holding on and he, he l reaches and leaps out looking for, uh, to, to try to grab onto um, uh, this T-Rex that is uh, uh, swinging back and forth, okay? And the crazy thing is that this T-Rex, I remember it, I, I remember it uh, uh, like it was yesterday, how I had to thumbnail this thing. Major, major, major weight right here, major shape, and then his torso, like that. And his torso was being held up, but then his head, was sort of sort of dangling like that. And um, the arms don't do anything. And the legs were, were sort of just dangling. 
Um, they, 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 they really couldn't, you know, find anything to hook onto. And then the tail was hanging as well. But he was suspended by uh, vines and swinging back and forth, right? And my shot was where Kong leaps out and grabs onto this T-Rex and uh, grabs onto his tail, actually. And, and, and right before, see, Anne is swinging in some vines right here. So she's just about to swing right into the jaws of the T-Rex and um, Kong grabs um, his tail. I worked on this shot for so long before I got help and I really wish that I had asked my supervisor. Um, I think he was the animation director on, on Hobbit, um, a guy named Dave Clayton. Um, I wish I'd asked him a lot earlier for help because he was so gracious when I finally did ask him for help. Um, I, I felt stupid for waiting so long. So really, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Um, ask your, your soups for help. They are so, they're there to help you. They want to help you. It's, 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 it's great. But anyway, what ended up happening was I, I kept on having this problem where Kong... I don't think I can show the shot. Um, I don't want to get in trouble. I've, I've gotten in trouble before showing stuff. Um, where th my problem was is that when Kong was leaping out, the dynamic within the two characters was totally wrong. And what, what, what I mean by that is what needed to happen within the body, with, the, with body mechanics, pose, silhouette, and uh, basically f staging, like where they where they ended up. Time after time, I reblocked it like ten times. Time after time, there was n like no dynamic, and what really needed to happen was the dynamic within the character within the T Rex needed to feel like he was like on his way, ready to snap at her, and he is completely like maxed out. Like when when Kong grabs the tail and yanks, he has to be completely like, like like totally. I don't know how to explain it, but maxed out. Um, and and it, he just misses her. And if he do, he and and here's the reason why: if he didn't max out, then it would almost look like you know if he tried a little harder, he still would have gotten her. So it needed to look like Kong yanking on his tail, like brought him, stopped him, but stopped him stopped him at the maximum limit of where like he could stop. Okay, and then with Kong, it needed to feel like the dynamic was all in. So. It wasn't just that he was reaching and was grabbing onto the tail and like had the strength to pull. It needed to look like he was latching on and his entire weight, he was like throwing everything into it. Meaning like if he slipped and let go, he'd fall to his death. If he didn't, if he um, was trying to, um, you know, if he didn't jump high enough and have enough downward momentum, then it wouldn't yank the the T Rex far enough. So he as well needed to feel like maximum. So that was kind of the dynamic that I was going for, and it was just missing. And so I got this great advice to break down the character. Okay. So, um, what are the forces? Um, so in, in character breakdown, what are the forces and simplify the forces? That was, that's what I was told to do. So check this out. How do I uh, change the opacity? Can I change opacity? Oh, there we go. Cool. This program's amazing. Okay. So what I realized was I got to stop looking for the rigs to kind of like tell me what's going on. I just need to do it. So I realized that the tail is not stretchy at all. The tail is essentially a rope. Okay, a rope has a tiny little bit of give, but not really all that much. Okay, and all that I should be concerned with is the weight in his in his hips and how it's connected to how it's um, sort of um, uh, relating to these vines. Okay, so I said the, the vines are ropes as well. So I drew this little rope. 
And then I said, what is his, what are his hips? His hips at rest is like a thousand kilogram weight. 1,000 kilograms, okay? His tail at rest is like a meaty rope, but it's a rope nonetheless, because um, I, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take into consideration uh, the, the like sort of like the stretchability of, of it. Let me try this again. There we go, okay? So here's another rope. And Kong, what is Kong? Kong has arms, and what these arms are, here's his body, here's his weight, here's his 1,000 kilogram weight, right? 1,000 kilograms, right? He's got these two fulcrums, okay? So I just put a little gear like this, and I said to myself, okay, what's now going to happen? Okay, when he grabs on, this is what's going to happen. We have our rope, we have our weight pointed this way, all right? I'm going to put a line across this to show you which way it's oriented. We have the rope, and then we have Kong's fulcrum arms, like this. And I'm just gonna put his um, weight, I'm gonna fill it in. What's the first thing that's going to happen? First thing that's going to happen is this, the fulcrum, is going to, it's going to be the weakest link, isn't it? Like bendy, bendy arms with like only biceps to, to make it so that you don't fall. Yeah, that's the first thing that's going to happen. So the first thing that's going to happen is within the character body, the fulcrum arms are going to max out. You see that? They max out. They go from bent to, to straight. Second thing that's going to happen, what's the next weakest link? It's this rope right here, okay? Because this rope is already maxed, isn't it? Okay, so the second thing that's going to happen is this rope is going to straighten according to the weight that's being pulled on it right now. Third thing that's going to happen is his the waist of the T-Rex is only being prevented from rotating by sort of like the, the, the vines that are holding it still. Now the vines that are holding it still, those aren't really going to be prevented from moving like left or right, and that's what's going to make the, the hips rotate, okay? So what's after this is the hips start rotating. like this. And uh, King Kong is still holding on. All right, and then finally, any and all give that's left in the um, vine itself, the vine setup, is going to, is going to uh, uh, start stretching and it's going to hit its max. Okay, so here we go. This ended up being Something like this. I don't have the sketchbook anymore, but I have a sketchbook filled with, with, with this thing. And in fact, I even like drew the ropes and I drew a thousand kgs on, on everything as well. So, so here is the dynamic within the character. Now, can I use any of this? I mean, these, are these thumbnails? Are these, is this a storyboard? Is any of this stuff that I can put in Maya? No, not at all. But we're, we're 38 minutes I had a little bit of an introduction, so let's say 35 minutes. We're 35 minutes into the planning of this, of, 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 of a scene, and um, I mean, look at all we've accomplished so far. How helpful is this thing to, to look at? I, 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 would, I would venture to guess that you've never turned your characters into ropes and, and fulcrums and 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 thousand kilogram weights and and broken it down you know like this okay i just venture to guess all right once i'd figured this out how it gets to this 
point, this point, which is, I mean, you have to admit, this is 100% maxed for everything, right? And I don't know if I could have gotten there. Well, I actually, I can tell you, I was not getting there. I, I, un, until I start saying to myself, what are the forces within the character and how do I break it down and simplify it? Okay, and then it was so easy to then go back into Maya, just sort of like, just do this frame one, frame, frame eight or seven, frame 10, frame 13, frame 21, or whatever the hell it turned out to be. I was, I was like done. It was like painting by numbers after that. Okay, so what is the dynamic of uh, within this, this character? Well, as soon as, I mean, I think that um, a hippopotamus, the, the weight of a hippo compared to the weight of a bike is, is like extreme to very, very small, especially relatively. So I think that pretty much the, the rhino is doing all of the moving, okay? So basically, it's a rhino that is, oops, here we go. It's a rhino that's moving and the, the bike is kind of along for the ride, okay? But even when I started doing these like little simple shapes, I started realizing that we have, for the most part, a flower sack, right? It's got its head. It's you know big, big dumb you know rhino, rhino ears and and whatever, right? But we basically are dealing with a flower sack, aren't we? So let's go back. So what do I want to have happen within the body? And so these are not quite the thumbnails yet because I will want to use the entire character. This is sort of just the character breakdown of the forces and the dynamic of the character. So once this character is shot out, I want like it to look seriously like a, a flower sack, like really seriously, literally getting like flung, like flying out of this base, right? I don't know what that would look like, but there is this there is this definitely this dynamic of like the, and it doesn't matter really even how, like how big the belly is. Like we can we can make this we can come back and kind of make this you know fit with the the rhinoceros body right but then what happens is I'm going to do these like you know pretty small is that it starts to kind of like rotate right it starts to kind of have a little bit of backwards rotation this is where the backflip comes in at a certain point though the back needs to start arching. Why? Because that pose change, when it straightens out, is going to finish the backflip and whip the body around, okay? So after the back arches, then we have pretty much this part staying still, and the butt, like really kind of, you know, uh, uh, flipping over, and starting to catch up with the, the, the belly, right? And then, um, then they both start straightening out like this, okay? <clears throat> so it doesn't matter that I drew this going from left to right. It's just easier to read, I feel, for me. Um, this is all moving forward. So this is like, you know, up, like up here, right? Because he's flying out. And then this is where his back starts arching, right, like this. And then this, this one, he flips around, his belly is crunching up, like that. And then everything starts kind of straightening out. Okay? So actually I can, I can erase these now because I've, I've moved them. So when I say simplifying the oops simplifying the forces, this is what I'm talking about. We've gone from, you know, a pretty pretty complex silhouette 
to, hey, you know what? This looks actually like something that I've dealt with a lot of times. And now let me sort of like simplify this for us. Now, not too hard to figure out where the bike's going to go, right? Because the bike, really easy for this character to, to kind of like work with. So the bike, he's going to be holding onto the bike, right? And it should probably move with... Yeah, I'm just going to say the bike is, you know, back here. He's holding onto the bike. It's blasted out with the bike. It's still holding on to it. Right? It's still behind him. And now what starts happening is the bike kind of stops rotating. And as the butt kind of like starts coming down, you know, he's almost almost on the seat, right? And then he's then at this point, you know, holding on on the seat. Blast it out with holding the bike like this, does finishes the backflip and then comes around. And then lands. Right? Right here. And what do we what do we do when something like this big lands? We squish it, right? But gigantic smash. Okay, you see that? Oh, it's kind of kind of in the way. My face, my stupid face is in the way. Let me delete this so you can see. Okay, now how much how much time did I put into that? I was explaining as I was going. It probably would have taken me like ten minutes to do, um, and and you know do maybe a little bit of a cleaner job. But now I have the character completely broken down super simply. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that the modifiers that uh, are added onto the scene, like through space, that's not really part of the, the scene dynamic that we need to take into consideration. It's like, just like what does space mean? Space means that the y arc, so gravity, the y arc is going to be extremely, um, it's going to be spaced out. It's going to be, oh, well, that's so funny that that's how it works. Yeah, you're going to use spacing actually, um, and not really timing in general, but you're going to use spacing to make it so that the y arc or, or you know, falling up and down or jumping up and falling down is, uh, it matches, matches outer space. So this really has that dynamic within the character that matches that that scene dynamic of the like that boom that like explosion out of this this scene that escape um i love i love 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 in movies when when somebody when like the building explodes and like one frame later like the character is shot out of it it's like the um it's like a luke's x-wing um uh, in uh, no 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 they were already really far away. I'm thinking about the Millennium Falcon in um, Return of the Jedi when they blow up the Death Star finally again and the fire like there's the shot where the fire is like creeping onto the, the uh, you know c c creeping around the glass of the of the bridge or whatever you uh, cockpit and then it goes boom, and there's fire, like, boom, out like this, and then the Millennium Falcon, zoom, shoots out of the fire. I love that. So that's kind of the dynamic that I'm looking for, the scene dynamic, okay? It's that explosive energy, that ejection from, from this thing, okay? Um, all right, so then now that I have this, this, this awesome thing that I can use to, uh, you know, make my shot a little bit easier to start. Do I start? No. I mean, because this isn't really the thumbnail. This is the, um, this is just the character uh, breakdown. Now we move on to reference. Now remember from the reference lecture, I, if you haven't seen that, I definitely, uh, I, I really do think that it has a lot in there for you. Um, the reference lecture is, um, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's in the store. Um, don't, I don't always know exactly what videos um, I've, I've remembered to archive yet. Um, if you remember from the reference lecture, what we're trying to reference, especially with a cartoony shot, is just like tiny little pieces of the shot. 
for cartoony shots, it's like extremely cartoony shots, I like to actually video my hands doing it. So boom, like that would be the, the Millennium Falcon thing that I, that I was just explaining. Right? I would just I would just record like just like this. I would use this video and that would give me almost everything I need in terms of timing to do it. I also if you if you heard me, I do like mouth sound effects. It's you sound stupid and, and sometimes you you know you can feel like an idiot doing it, but when your shots are like the best in the movie, you can laugh all the way home. Okay? Um, so I, I highly recommend doing that. And, then, and, and that's primarily why I said that there, there really isn't any shot that I can think of that you can't shoot some video reference for. Because if it's super cartoony, then just record your hands and do it with sound effects. Even if it is super cartoony, turn the camera on and just get little, little bits of the shot. The worst thing you can do is to try to like take reference of the entire shot and like use like one take for everything. No, 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 no. It's, I mean, it's just gonna be super dangerous to try to, to, to do reference for this. But just like the, the posing of being shot out and hold, having that bicycle, holding it up like that, You know, um, how could you shoot that? You know, just just set up your camera and like maybe just like run and like just just like jump off the curb and go like that and just see. Just I I don't know what you're going to see, but just watch it and see if you can take anything from it. Okay, um, get on your bike and for this moment where the hippo lands right here. Oops, oopsie. Where the hippo lands, um, why is it doing that? Oh, yeah. When the hippo lands, just get on your bike, put on put on your uh, your camera, and then just do like a big landing. Just just you know you don't even have to do a jump. Just pretend to land on your bike. Just see what you get. Okay, you'll be surprised at what you get. Um, everyone thought it was hysterical when they were doing the visual effects for Jurassic Park. And there's that video of all of the animators in running through the parking lot. And one of, one of the idiots, he like falls over a trash can and he ends up like breaking his wrist or his, or his leg or something. And it's, it's sad, it's tragic, poor guy. But, but um, everyone thought it's hysterical, especially like lay people thought like, oh wow, what a fun job, that must be so easy to do. Anyway, we know better. Um, what's the point? Point is, is that even all the way back then, when they didn't have any clue how velociraptors, or I think they were supposed to be doing the reference for the Gallimimus, the, um, they had no clue really how the Gallimimus like, moved. They still, especially considering, I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper, especially considering that, you know, the dinosaurs all have like, you know, like a dog leg, like that double bending um, leg. They walk on their toes, basically, like a dog. Um, considering all of that, they still like ran out into the parking lot and put their arms like this and started running and jumping over stuff. What the hell? If you think about it, what the hell were they ever expecting to get from that video reference? Posing? Certainly not. Definitely not posing. Maybe a little bit of timing and maybe just like some je ne sais quoi of like landing um, uh, on your legs when you're not using your arms to balance yourself, right? Because the, the dinosaurs, you know, they, do, they don't use their arms, right? Their, their, their tiny little arms are tucked in when they're running. So maybe, maybe just a little bit of like trying to see like where the dynamic in the body is when you take a, a big landing just on your legs. I don't know. Because when we land, you know, we put our arms up, you know, we kind of like counter animate, <laughs> counter animate, we kind of like move our arms up like as we're falling down. And uh, I don't know why, it doesn't do anything. But uh, uh, yeah, so maybe that's what they were looking for. But whatever they were looking for, they found something in there. So um, <clears throat> I guess to, to, to answer the, the, the question that kind of made me want to do this uh, lecture, 
Um, when you when you think that you have a shot that you cannot shoot your own video reference for, then uh, think again because you would always use your hands and v shoot some reference that is the, the, the sole intent of it is to just find like a little nugget here and there and, and not try to shoot reference for the whole thing, okay? That's my, 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 my main advice. And then hunting for reference, we don't ever want to like refer to the one thing, ever. So, like when I gave you the, uh, the cartoony intermediate lecture, what did I have? I had this big fat guy like falling, flapping on the ground. I had slow motion of water balloons like, brrr, like popping on the ground. I had slow motion of sausage like being like cooked in a pan and like hitting, okay? I had um, footage of people running on treadmills drunk and falling flat on their face. Okay, all this stuff. And when he does his little zip out, did I have, did I like look for clips of Usain Bolt, the Olympic runner, to see like how fast, you know, he runs? No. I took slow motion of rubber bands because that's the impression that I wanted to give. If you haven't seen the cartoony lectures, you should watch those, you should watch all three of them because you get, you get off the hook so much once you finally realize that all the audience is really dying for is just the impression of the motion. That's it. They're just looking for that really strong feeling of what you're trying to get across and not the, the motion itself. Okay? That's what, that's what you need to, to, to finally realize. And it's so much easier to animate once, you, once you've done that, I promise you. I promise, okay? So in terms of collecting reference, uh, yeah, you can go to like reference, reference. They have, actually they have some hippos, right? But this isn't all that exciting. This is not really gonna give us that much uh, to work with when we're trying to get our shot, our, our super dynamic scene done, is it? Not really, not at the end of the day. Um, you'd be much better um, going on YouTube, oh, this is not loading. Um, you'd be much better to go on YouTube and research like um, people being shot out of cannons, right? Because that's really like the dynamic, the scene dynamic that we're going for here, right? Someone getting shot out of a cannon, right? You'd be much better to, um, you can actually find some backflips on BMX bikes on, on YouTube very easily. Right? There's, there's thousands of videos of people doing backflips on bikes. That's good. And then you probably want to take uh, a page out of my cartoony book and look for some like you know slow motion water balloons and sausages and, and things being dropped so you can really have a hysterical landing on this tiny little bike. It'd be, to me, it's funniest when it's a really small bike and like right here, like this gigantic... Uh, a, a character is like crushing this tiny little bike, right? Not, uh, not, not, not a bike made for made as for, as big as a, a hippo would need um, for me. So, any rate, um, when you think that there's reference, that there's no reference, then come on, you you just gotta start thinking about it. Okay, now that our we've we've um, uh, gather reference that gives us the impression, now we need to move on to thumbs. One thing that people, uh, I think a, a mistake that people make early on is they try to stage the action a little too early. Okay, and what staging is, is when they, you try to figure out exactly like where they're going to land and kind of like where the camera is because it has to do a little bit with, with um, directing the, the scene. I believe that reference, that you should shoot your reference and g gather your reference draw your thumbnails from that from those um, that reference and from your imagination and your thumbnails should solely perform as your dream poses the poses that you would get in your animation if everything went absolutely perfectly okay not what you are 
thinking is going to work, not what you th are thinking is going to end up being uh, like a good like halfway between that moment when he gets shot out and the moment when he lands, right? So like not even starting to think about the thumbnails as in-betweens or breakdowns of any other drawing, okay? Really almost take them as singular drawings. If someone walked up to you and said, hey, I want you to draw, illustrate a children's book, and on the cover is a hippopotamus getting like shot out of a cannon, um, or you know, jumping off of a ramp uh, and and going through this glass window, and this this alien space station is exploding around him, and um, he's doing a backflip, and he's like halfway done. He's like halfway through the backflip. Treat it literally as like that one drawing, because it's a way better problem to have to try to like fight and wrangle and mess with your thumbnails so that they'll fit together in in your scene than it is to kind of have a little bit uninspired and boring and 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 underdone poses in your thumbnails that kind of like just like go together beautifully. Oh, this is this is all fitting so beautifully and then kind of like you just watch what's on screen and and really kind of like none of your poses are really even coming through. It's almost as if like you have like a start pose and an end pose and like everything in between there is almost just a kind of like a natural, like a, an assumption almost, right? But um, alternatively, if you have, you know, this one moment, you know, this one thumbnail where, um, you know, your character is like really, really bent like this, oops. I don't have I don't have all the controls. Let me start this over. Really, really bent. And if you want those big hippo legs like that. Holding on to the uh, holding on to the handlebars, those little hippo arms. And this bike is, you know, already rotated around. In fact, I'm, I'm already not happy with this. This needs to be even more bent. Like that. Flying through the air, right? That could, be, that could be one of your thumbs, right? And what you're doing when you make a thumb like this is you're saying to yourself, I don't know how this is going to go, but if I had my way, this would be one of the images that, that flash by in front of the audience at 24 frames per second. This would be one of them, okay? Whereas what you, if what you end up doing is kind of just like drawing your thumbs to make sense of this like elaborate thing that you've kind of like set yourself up for you know you put yourself in a little bit of trouble by deciding on this crazy action then that's all it's ever going to uh, do is never going to live up to you know your your ultimate like sort of vision for the shot okay so this is drawing who cares what it is is this drawing one or ten it doesn't matter like draw another one and if it's a better if it's an even crazier pose don't stop and say, wait, how am I going to, wait, wait, does this come before or after the second one? If it's, if it's, or the first one, if it's better than the first one, then is the first one really inspiring you any much anymore? Or, or inspiring you much anymore? Probably not, right? It's because it's, it's not as good as the one you just drew. So throw it out. It's not going to get in. Sorry, Puck. Sorry, bucko. You're too, you're, you're not good enough. You're not going in the shot. I tried to say pal and then bucko, so I said Puck. Um, you're not good enough. You're not going in the shot anymore. Sorry, I feel bad for you, Mr. Drawing, but I've got 10,000 more in me, so, you know, this is, you know, get used to it, okay? 
That's what I'm talking about. If I did, if I, you know, I spent another hour just drawing thumbnails, which is good for a scene like this. If you're working on a feature film at a feature studio and you were giving something like this dynamic, an hour on thumbs is like the minimum you should spend. Anyway, so after an hour of thumbs, you know, this one would be in the trash after 10 seconds, right? But uh, you, you got to start somewhere and you should always start with sort of like an understanding of the like the ultimate goal like the like if I had my way these are all the poses I would get in are you gonna get them all in no maybe not maybe you will maybe, but, but probably not um, but that's where you want to go with your thumbs and then staging is when you start thinking about okay how is this actually going to work I like to start with extremely simple um, like this, like chicken scratch boards. Like the camera's low, we've got the, the base off in the distance, right? And then like it's exploding and he comes out like this, he's flying. And then in the next shot or in the, you know, the continuation of this, seriously how loose I'm doing it right now is exactly how how, how I'd li I, I normally do it. So then the camera starts panning and the base is, you know, kind of like moving moving over like this. And we see this guy is actually starting to do a little bit of a backflip like this. And then camera's panned completely off of this exploded base by now. And this guy just finished this thing and he's landing. On the on the ice, okay. So that's one way to do it, okay. Now, how long did that take me? I was looking at the clock here. It took about a minute and ten seconds to draw all three of those, okay. But this super super boring, extremely boring, right? It's just kind of like looking at this thing and just panning over as as it happens. I have enough time to do another one. Let's start really close, okay. It explodes and it comes right at us. So big gigantic hippo coming right at us on the, on, the, on the bike. And we whip around and as they are holding on, actually you know this way. We're kind of behind them and we whip around and we see this this lake like approaching and we're heading towards it and then we back off just a little bit we let the hippo gain ground and doosh. land on the lake and then doosh, scoot off like that. Already so much more dynamic. If you haven't gotten the the gist of this yet, everything I do pretty much in my workflow relies on an iterative approach. Okay? Um, everything. If you remember animating with tempo, you remember from that lecture that I get to my timing choices as fast as possible okay by using helper objects why because I can go through 10 iterations of timing choices without ever having to touch the rig and slow myself down and then I get to access I get to that brilliant timing choice and then it's just again it's just like filling in filling in the blanks right I've got my dope poses my awesome my dream poses from my thumbnails okay from that thumbnail you know, that I know I really want to get into the shot, right? So why would I waste time posing my character to try to work out the timing? No, 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 no. Poses are done. Now let's do some timing. Do it with helper objects. Go through 10 iterations, and then you'll finally get to the best choice. And, um, and then finally you just go back, get those thumbs, plug them into that beautiful timing that you've, you've, you've chosen, and you're done. So the exact same thing here with those staging choices. I just did two, they took about a minute each. I would do 10 and then pick the best one. There's a game in improv, I'll leave you with this. There's a game in improv 
called New Choice. And basically, the idea is that you come out and you say something, and then off screen or off stage, someone says New Choice, and then you have to come up with something else. And it gets funny the more time they say New Choice because you run out of ideas, and you just draw a blank, and then you say something that like doesn't seem like it's going to be funny at all, but because you stopped thinking, it's the funniest. So an example, I can't, you can't really do it to yourself, but you say like, hey, I'm going to go get some McDonald's. And they're like, new choice, some Burger King, new choice, Pizza Hut, new choice, uh, uh, circumcision. And oh, that's so funny, right? Um, so that's the, that's, the, that's the area of your brain you actually want to access. You want to drain everything and get to the good stuff um, as fast as possible. So an iterative approach is really, really, really necessary. So let me just go over this one more time. Um, how I like to plan, plan for success. First thing you need to do is break down the scene. Okay, when this is a physical shot, you need to ask yourself, what is the overall dynamic of the scene? Okay, what is really going on energy-wise? Okay, then find the forces and simplify the forces. When you're done with that, you break down the characters. What are the dynamics within the characters? What are the forces within the characters? And then simplify those forces. Okay, make them tie into what's supposed to be accomplished energy-wise, dynamically, with the scene itself. Okay, then move on to reference. I like to shoot my own reference. If it's cartoony, I use my hands. If it's not cartoony, um, I sometimes use my hands even if it's not cartoony. But you definitely can always use your hands and little sound effects and stuff like that. Always shoot reference for everything if you have time. If you're given time, man, getting paid to like videotape yourself like a goofball, I mean, come on, no better job in the world than that. So you take some reference, and remember from my lecture, lecture on reference video, don't try to like get everything perfect in one take. Take a little snippet from each take that you do. Um, and then avoid, avoid like trying to hit it right on the nose. Like I bet you for this shot, like one piece of hippopotamus footage is not going to be used. It's all going to be something completely different because we're trying to capture the impression for the audience. Then you move on to thumbnails, and they are all about poses. They're not about staging, and they're not about animation. They're not about timing either. So don't try to do like a pencil test with your thumbnails. As CG animators, because Maya fights us so hard on timing anyway with its you know spline interpolation and all that crap, you have to be extra vigilant when you're, when you're doing that, okay? So thumbs are all about posing. Get your poses that you would, you would die to have in, in the end of your scene. Then put them away. Stage your scene. Again, iterations. The more iterations you can do, the better your, your scene is going to turn out, bar none, every single time. And then uh, the last stage, the last thing I have written down here is get to work, okay? So that is my workflow. When I have the time, I, I employ every single one of those uh, things. Um, I, I, the only modifier on it is if I have time. If the client is, is paying enough and we can take our time to do every single one of those stages, then we will. If they're not, then we'll take out the ones that aren't going to give us as much um, you know, uh, a leg up on getting the, the work done. But we don't not do them because it's a, you know, one is a technique for one shot and one's a technique for another. This is the workflow. This is the process. And so it is done every single time and the results are consistent. That's what we're always going for. You want to be consistent. All right. You want to be dependable. If someone gives you a shot, it's going to turn out as good as the one you just did. Right? At the end. In the end, that's the, that's the, the, the job that we have. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this was spawned kind of from a Ask Video Mail question, but you can also request more resources resources in the resource wish list, uh, which is a form in the KennyWay.com forums. It's been a pleasure. Good luck with your animation, and as always, rock on.